yeah, I played great today. Felt good. Hit it good. Short game was good. Putting. How about you? Yeah? Well, good. I'm glad Stripe Show is helping. Yeah, it's going great. Episode 20. Can you believe it? It's really, really grown. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, you're going to have to watch it. We've got a great show coming up. It's happy hour. Yes, please. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Stripe Show, episode 20. Can you believe it? We made it all the way to our 20th episode, and we would have not made it here without you watching and following along. Thank you so much for being a participant here on the Stripe Show. We've learned a lot. I hope that you're learning a lot as well. We thought we'd do something a little bit different this week. It's happy hour here, and sometimes you got to take a step away have a beverage of your choice, and reflect back on some of the things that have been working for you in your golf game. And that's what we want to do here, is reflect back on the previous 19 episodes and what has been some of the better segments that we feel like we've produced, but also based on your feedback that you really, really like. So we're going to have some fun here in episode 20, reliving the driver, irons, short game, the putter, all attempt to get you better at the game of golf. And we're going to kick it off with a segment we call 14 Strong here. You know it. We pick one club every single week, and we try to make it a strength. And back in June, episode 15, that 14 Strong, it was a 7-iron where we talked about flighting it down. How do I flight the golf ball down and control that trajectory? You guys really like that segment. And we're going to relive it here to kick off episode 20. Check this out. Okay, so here we go. You can see the ball teed very high for a 7-iron. This is a good drill to learn how to deal off the face and shallow out the attack angle. Very high for a 7. Now, as we go to the top here, you're going to see a full turn. We're trying to shorten him up just a little bit, and that's actually really, really well done for him. He'll get a little long at the top. But as we come down now, what we're doing is we're feeling this lead wrist right here in transition starting to flatten out. So he feels those bottom three fingers on the left hand starting to curl underneath and then even unhinge the lead wrist just a little bit as well. So the left wrist feels a bit more bowed to him and that really you can see it right there that's a good look at it left wrist flattening out lead wrist unhinging and that prepares the face as the shaft shallows out look at the club face our club face is in a nice position now where it's a little bit closed and de-lofted and as he comes down in the impact he doesn't have to worry about that face angle and what's a big improvement here with that ball teed very high is his lead shoulder is starting to work a little bit more up out of the way. The left shoulder is working up and around. And you can see here right before impact, the handle's forward. Again, that lead wrist feels a bit bowed, a bit unhinged. That's got the face in a great position where he can just continue to turn that left shoulder working up out of the way, that left leg pushing up through impact. And he's got to do that in order to catch the ball off that tall tee. So before as he would come down to impact, that lead wrist would be a bit more cupped. There was more angle in the left hand. I'd have the face a little bit more open. And then as he would come down to impact, that lead shoulder uh, would be a little bit lower. He'd be kind of flexing down with the spine rather than extending with the spine to allow that left shoulder to work up and out of the way. And that really shallows out the attack angle. So left wrist position, spine angle through impact, allowing the left shoulder to do the right thing, left leg pushing up. He's controlling the loft of the face, a de-loft in the face, and shallowing out the attack angle. Let's talk about that a little bit more. All right, so you can see the tall T there. I like that drill 
it does two things. One is when we're trying to flight the ball down, it's going to help de-loft the face a little bit, right? We got to de-loft the club face to flight the golf ball down lower. The second thing is it's going to help us not get too steep on the attack angle. Oftentimes we get real steep trying to hit it low and then as we get steep we throw the club shaft at it and then we add loft to the face. We launch it high and it's got a lot of spin. So we want to de-loft the face, right? And then we want to kind of shallow out that attack angle and that tall T can help that as it really worked well for him. So how do we de-loft the club face? Well the first thing is is the lead wrist coming down at some point has to start to flatten out or has to start to bow out. Now, whether you do that at the top, if we look from the target line here, whether we're kind of curling that wrist at the top or we're starting to curl that left hand coming down or we bring it to impact and then we curl it right at impact, right? And we see all three of those in the context of the swing out there in professional golf. Now, what I like to do with a lot of players is get them to feel it somewhere here at the top or maybe on the way down. And you can see as with Cohen, we were starting to kind of curl that left hand as he was starting to come down. His tendency is he would kind of pull on the handle a little bit, right? And that lead wrist would be cupped, right? So we were feeling like the hands would just kind of stay there and then he would start to curl that left hand. The bottom three, check this out here, Tom. These three, right? We've talked about this a lot here. These three fingers starting to kind of curl underneath and taking that Callaway there up towards the sky like that. All right, so we're starting to get that left hand to flatten out, might feel bowed, and then from there, I can start to carry that to impact. My right wrist is bent, my right elbow is bent with that left hand flat and curling into impact. Look at that club shaft leaning forward at impact. So that's kind of how we start to get some lag, how we start to get some forward shaft leg de-lofting that club face. Now, attack angle, right? You can see here with this ball teed very, very high, it'd be difficult for me to get too steep on it, right? His tendency would come down and we would get really steep on it and then we'd have to throw the wrist angles at the bottom. So with that tall tee, if I got too steep, I would hit right down underneath it and he did that a few times. So when shallowing out the attack angle, he would really feel like this left shoulder would start to work up and around. And so much of that from the target line here is that extension in the spine, right? So you can see the extension in the spine this way. His tendency would kind of hang out too much down like this, kind of hit down on it too much and then throw the wrist angles. So as we start to come down with the wrist angles, we start to turn and extend the spine and that left shoulder starts to work up and around out of the way, shallowing out the attack angles. This is an excellent drill. You take your seven iron, you start to work on those wrist angles, you start to work on the extension in your spine, and you can hit these nice flighted shots with your short iron. There it is. Nice flighted shot. Could be a little counterintuitive, right? If I tee the ball really high, it's going to cause me to hit it way up in the air. So you can see I took that right off that tall tee. So we start with that, we hit some shots, and then we just take the same concepts all the way down to the ground. There it is. A nice flighted down seven iron. You can do this with your eight iron. You can do this with your nine iron. You can do it down with your wedges. I like this shot. I think it really breeds proper hand alignment, wrist alignment. It starts to breed the proper spine angle, the proper rotation. All of those things are conducive to great ball striking. I hope you enjoyed this 14 strong. Thank you to my junior student. He is doing really, really well up there in Evansville, Indiana. Such an important part of iron game is controlling that trajectory. We talk a lot about that here on the Stripe Show. And of course, the loft of the face is primarily what's going to launch that golf ball. How high or how low? It's like 80, 85% of the launch angle, and then the attack angle has something to do with that as well. But learning how to get that club shaft to return with a little bit of forward lean, right? See the shaft leaning forward and that club face de-lofts. And of course, so many of you are going the other way, right? So we come in and we lean the shaft back like that, and now we're adding loft, and we're turning the seven iron into an eight iron. Now I want you to turn the seven iron 
into a six iron. So that piece right there, that 14 strong, is one of the most important ones that we've done all year. And it was really cool to see the feedback from that. And I know it's helped a lot of you. So I want you to watch that over and over and get to where you can flight the golf ball down with your irons and it's gonna help a ton. Wedges, nine, eight, seven, really to there. Wedges to seven. Being able to flight those down is gonna help you hit more greens and improve your proximity. All right, let's move on. We're gonna to go to another segment here. And this one was about the driver. And you might remember this. This was just a couple weeks ago and we got a ton of good feedback. And we got the guys incorporated into this as well. We introduced TrackMan, right? TrackMan, that launch monitor, and it measures the golf ball, it measures the club head, and we got those numbers involved and we had a lot of fun here in doing that. Check this out. All right, guys, big show. Introducing TrackMan today into the show. One of the best pieces of technology ever in the game of golf. Track, I, used to, I used to run track in high school. No, Tom, we're not running track in high school. This is TrackMan. This is a piece of technology. So wait, we're running track today? Seriously? No, 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 no. We're not running track. We're taking this piece of technology out on the golf course with us today. This is... This is Doppler radar. That's 30,000 pulses per second or more, right? Yeah. This is J J Cantori. Jim Cantori. Oh, yeah, Jim Cantori. No, 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 no. We had Jim. We had Jim yeah. on previous show. Jim Cantori's not coming. Trackman, Doppler radar. We're going to measure attack angle. We're going to measure club head path. We're going to measure club face angle. All of those things. Oh, can I bring my micrometer and speed square? No compass or protractor? <laughs> no. Well, you're good to go. All right. You know what? You're going to learn something too because we're going to introduce one of the best pieces of technology into the show this week and it is called TrackMan. Check that out Tom right there. That little orange box right there is one of the best pieces of technology. You probably see it on the PGA Tour, the LPGA Tour. Every single week it tells us all kinds of information. We're not going to get into every single number that it gives us as it pertains to the ball, to the club. Instead we're going to feed it to you slowly. We're going to talk about three numbers today. Attack angle, club head path, and club face angle. And I want to start here on number one T and talk about attack angle. This little tool here, track me, it's taught me a lot about attack angle, how it influences the path of the club head, which we'll get to here in a second, but also how it influences the launch angle and spin, and more importantly, the distance. And I want to kick it off here with a little diagram that I want you to look at. Check this out. All right, how about that? Negative five, that's downward attack angle. The club head's moving down relative to the ground. Zero, that's level to the ground. And then positive five, that's on the way up. Amazing the difference as it pertains to your distance. Carry and total. Let's bring this to life here. I'm gonna hit this first one with my driver and I'm gonna try to hit down on it. And I'm gonna try to swing around 104, 105, somewhere in there. All right, so here we go. Take my setup here. And I'm going to consciously hit down. Yeah. So what I did, I tried to get out in front of it a little bit, ball back, and hit down on it. How'd I do, Justin? Oh, you hit down. Yeah, you uh, 104.9, so about 105. Okay. Um, Club head speed, 105. Yep. Okay. And attack angle, negative 4.3. Okay, so negative 4.3. That's a number I see a lot on the lesson team. Negative 4 down, negative 3, negative 2. We see that a lot. What was my carry? Uh, 229.2. That's not very good for that club head speed. 229. Okay. And then the total? 243.7. So we're, we're losing distance here. I caught that a little high on the face, okay, up in there. But those are not very good numbers for 105 club head speed. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tee it up just a little bit more, a little bit higher. And I'm going to try now to change my attack angle to more positive on the way up, but swing at the same speed. Here we go. Ball forward now. A little bit more behind it. Yeah, I hit that one really good. I caught that right in the center of the face there, Tom. And the speed was? Your speed. <clears throat> 105. 
1059. Yep. That's about the best here at the Stripe Show. Go ahead. Uh, attack angle 2.2. Positive. Yep. Okay, good. Positive All right, so we changed the attack angle by six degrees. We went from negative four down to two degrees on the way up. Now, what was the carry? The carry was 263.9. Wow, 263. So that's just over 30 yards difference in carry in the total. 292. Wow. Now, that's more like it yeah. for that speed. 292 total, and that's just under 50 yards of difference. And I caught those in similar spots, really. I didn't catch it way out on the toe or the heel. That's a big time difference in speed, or a big time difference in carry and total as far as distance is concerned. But what was the big number that we changed? Attack angle, I hit up on it more. So how do we do that, right? How do we change the attack angle? Well, the first thing that I did, I teed it up just a little bit higher, right? Oftentimes I see players, they get that high ball, they pop it up, a lot of spin, they start teeing it down low, right? That would be an adjustment that you could make. You could also start taking away loft on the face through the configuration. And those are adjustments you can make if you don't want to change your swing. But if we change our swing, we're going to tee it up a little higher. We're going to get the ball forward. Check this out here, Tom. I'm going to go feet together. I'm going to kick out this left foot, just a little flare in the left foot, and then a big step. Now, you hear me talk all the time here on the Stripe Show about the driver. Hands in line with the driver. Spine tilt. And I'm telling you, so many of you, check this out, Jaron from Target Line, you better turn your chest to the right a little bit and show me a little piece of this form. I see so many of you bury that form like that, and that gets you hitting down on it. So that is key in the setup position. Now, from there, give me some depth in the left arm. Watch this. Give me some depth. What's depth? This way. My left arm's going more that way. Okay. Not very much depth, a lot more depth, okay? Now that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you just suck the club head inside. Fingernails on a chalkboard for me, you know that, right? Club head, get it out here a little bit, right out in front of you, then give me some depth in the left arm. I love that sequence. Check that out from face on here, Tom, when I do that. Club head goes out here a little, and then the left arm rounds out. And Look at that turn, nice turn in the hip and the shoulder. So I like that. Now, from there, when you come into impact, I want to see two things here. Number one, I want to see the spine stay in a little bit of right bend, okay? Remember from setup, I said, give me a little bit of tilt to the right. When you hit it, I want you to feel like you're still there. I see a lot of you go to left bend. And when you go to left bend, you're going to hit down on it. I promise you. Left bend, down. Little right bend, more on the way up. Second thing, when you swing through, I want to see a little extension. You've heard me talk about that here on the Stripe Show. This way, get that dish, extend, flexion, no good. You come into impact and you flex down like this, you stay down again, you hit down on it. Left bend and flexing down steepens that attack angle. Too much negative. Right bend and extend, attack angle starts to come on the way up. I like that. For you at home, we set up, ball forward, hands in line, get here. Show me a little piece of that form from the target line. Right, get, I tell you, get four or five degrees closed versus one degree open for most of you. From there, give me some depth. And then we're going to stay in right bend, and we're going to extend. And you know what? We're going to give this a ride, Justin. <coughs> Best one of the day right there. Hit up on that. I'm going to guess, what, probably three degrees? Give me one second. Coming through. I'm going to guess, just make something up. Yeah, 2.5. <laughs> 2.5. 2.5 on the way up, and just say 317 yards total. 289.4. Well, 289. You can't get him to go there. I don't think I don't think it actually got it right. But we're going to go with 317 yards down the middle. You do that at home, okay? You get that attack angle more on the way up, and this club becomes really fun to hit. Thanks for joining us.
no question, one of my favorite segments that we've done all year here on the Stripe Show. Fun to get the guys involved in it in all seriousness. We're going to be looking for two camera guys the next year. Send your resumes to the Stripe Show Wait, at 1830.com. Right? All right, moving on. One of the segments that we do every single week here on the Stripe Show, we call it Show Us Your Swing. We take four or five of your swings and we break it down. I get the question all the time. What do you use to break it down? Well, I just do it right here on my phone. Check this out. This is next week. This is Micah. And uh, look at this swing. Awesome. All right, we get all kinds of swings from all over the country. And I just do the analysis right here. Draw the lines, picks up my mic, and then we package it up. And of course, you know how we do it here. We give you good info and we put it in the right order. Because that's what it takes to get better. There's a lot of good information out there. And we want to give you good information here, but we want to put it in the right order. Every segment that I do, we think through what's A, then B, then C. How should the student consume it? What's the most important thing? Because that's how you get better. You got to get good info, and you got to put it in the right order. And it's been awesome to see the feedback from the students that have been sending videos in and have made it on to the Stripe Show. And we want to share a couple here that we feel like have been our favorites. Check it out. All right, Dalen. Hey, good stuff in your swing. Like your style, man. Flip flops, no shirt, just ripping the driver out in the field. I'll tell you what, you rotate like a champ. Look at this as I come down to impact. I mean, that's phenomenal right there, how open your hips are, your shoulders. Really good stuff. You look like a good ball striker because of the way you rotate through the shot. Now, I think my advice to you, it looks like when you go back, it looks like your spine might be kind of leaning towards the target and then a little bit kind of moving towards the golf ball. All right, let's do that again so you can see if you watch your head, you can see your head's kind of maybe going down towards the ball. And I think that's because your spine, if we were to look from face on, it's leaning towards the target perhaps too much that way. So I want to show you something uh, that I think will help you stay in your spine angle going back and uh, keep you the same distance from the golf ball. But other than that, you do a really good job coming through impact with that rotation. So let me show you a couple things here. Hey, Dalen, I like your style. It's summer, man. It's hot. Just shed it down and keep it going. Let me tell you something. You got a good golf swing. Your rotation through impact, your ability to come in here to impact and get your hips open, your shoulders open, little bend in that trail elbow, it's fantastic. Probably the best rotation through impact we've seen yet here on the Stripe Show, so keep it up. Now, one of the things, small concern, it looks like from this view here, if we were looking at it, and of course I'm right-handed here, is that when you turn, your spine looks like it might be going just a little bit too much towards the target. So just be careful with that, right? So when you get in there, of course, you've just got just a, a subtle tilt away. For me, that's to the right. For you, lefty, that would be to the left. From there, when you turn, just feel like you're gonna stay a little bit more that way rather than letting your spine go this way, okay? So I think if you can do that, it'll keep you a little bit more centered up. It'll keep you just a little bit more behind it. And with that rotation, I really like that for you. So here we go. I'm gonna set up, little bit of tilt behind it, then I'm just gonna try to stay right there. I'm not gonna go here and then towards it. All right, and that'll keep us nice and centered. I'm gonna try to rotate just like you, Dan. I'm gonna really try to get out of the way. Oh, man, that felt good. I pulled it a little bit, but that rotation is special. Love your style. What, what's going on here? I mean, you just never know what's gonna happen here on the Stripe Show. My man, Tom, following your lead, Dalen. I love Show Us Your Swing. Every single week, we're taking your swings and we're getting them better. And you're probably wondering, well, I wanna send Travis my swing. I wanna get better. Here's how you get involved. 
Hey there, Travis Fulton here with The Stripe Show. You want to get involved? What's on your mind? Send me a question, tweet it to at 18 birdies app or email it to the stripe show at 18 birdies.com. But perhaps you really need some help. I want you to send me a video. And in that video, I want you to tell me what the tendencies are with your ball flight so I can help you. Film your swing from face on, where you're looking at me just like this, or the target line. One of these two angles is what I need to see to give you some good feedback. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to make you a deal. I'm going to show you my swing. Now I want you to show us your swing. Just like that. Welcome back to the Stripe Show episode 20. And you know what? One of the cool segments that we've been doing all year is catching up with some of the leaders in the industry. We've had some great interviews this year. Top teachers like Mark Blackburn, Dave Phillips, and also one of the top sports psychologists, Dr. Brett McCabe, and one of our very own here at 18 Birdies. And I want to share with you probably my favorite interview that we've done this year. This guy has really made an impact on the instruction industry and is doing some nice work out there on the PGA Tour. Check out this crazy dog, George Gankus. Back here, right outside the gates here, TPC Sawgrass, and look who I found, George Gankus. How you doing, buddy? What's up, buddy? Hey, man, thanks, thanks for, for joining me. me. Thank you for having me. GG Swing Tips, good chance that you've heard of that. You're blowing up, man. Where, where in the world did you come from? <laughs> I don't know. Just did some funny things on Instagram, <laughs> and uh, my buddy Danny Wax, who was on the tour, mm -hmm. um, he said, you gotta get on Instagram, it was about five years ago, and he said, you know, I said, I don't get on social media. And he's all, no, you gotta do it. He's all, just do some funny stuff and just do some golf vids, some information stuff, and your players are blowing up your juniors. And so I just did it. Yeah. And, and, and it went, you know, I got a lot of haters at first, and I still do, <laughs> but it, it was good. And then all of a sudden, things just went my way, I hey, guess. Hey, you're doing good, man. I love Thank it. Uh, and I, I watch it, and I've talked about some of your players on the golf channel and broken I, them down. You I did know. a great job. And Troy, and Troy Mullins, long drive champ there. Troy Mullins kills the ball. She kills it. And she you have does. a lot, of, like your players, I mean, they hit it. I mean, you, you create a lot of speed with the way that you're teaching the pivot, which we'll get to here in a second. Uh, mm -hmm. But I know you've got some players in the field right now here at the Players' Championship, and I want to get to them. You've worked with Sung Kang a long time, Danny Lee, but you're also working with now Adam Scott. Is that right? Yes. Good. Yes. How's that going? It's great. I mean, the, the guy already hits the ball good. It's not like I'm reinventing the wheel here. He's, uh, he's a baller, and he's a sweetheart of a guy. Yeah. And legitly people go well what are you going to do and i'm like really nothing but we changed his balance points a little bit and gave him a little more depth so he can rotate in the downswing because he wants to rotate but so when we look here his armpits the back of his armpits are over on his toes if he took it to the top and stayed in this angle go top and then you start it down You'd immediately, there's very little rotation for most players. Most mm -hmm. players go to the top again from those balance points are going to want to create balance here and they're going to want to stand back up. Okay. Now, the more he stands up, the more to get to the ball, he's going to throw angles mm -hmm. just to get to the ball. Okay. So a lot of players, so I'll demonstrate right now. So when you look at like someone who has really good posture here and they don't have any rounding in the back and that's what we were all taught, we'll always compensate armpits out in the toes. And so immediately most players are going to go, this way and a lot of players will move back immediately to balance now they're further away from the ball so either they're going to go drive and get it or they're going to throw their arms at the ball okay. let's ring me down now okay all right so, so gonna... from this for, so from the start okay let's talk about one thing so why don't you face the camera first okay. face it so why don't you move off the ball a lot okay just boom okay so if anybody tried to actually do my leg work from here they're going to be on their back foot mm -hmm. okay and that's not going to work okay they're going to get stuck on their back foot so there are players that I have that move off the ball, and those are the players that have a late like extension in the mid-spine thoracic here, and they'll actually start to drift and get here. But if you move to the top, go to the top and move off the ball, if you move off it, a lot of my players are gonna wanna slide back here, okay? Mm -hmm. That's right off the bat. But the guys who go move off the bat, and then they go into a late thoracic, boom, then all of a sudden they can sit right under them and turn, okay? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean you can't move off the ball. You can, because there's so many guys who've been success uh, successful, right. but without sliding or pushing off the trail leg, guys who move off, I would say, 
have a tendency to move back to here to, that are successful. The guys who get off here and start pushing or squat, yeah. both are dead. So that, that, so lot, a of, that lot of side bend, right? No good. No good for anybody. Unless you match it up late. Unless you match it up late. Because, I mean, I, I love to get some late thoracic. I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. But the fact, it's more powerful. But besides that, there are some players that I have seen that can dig back here without getting the left side of the pelvis high, right. and they're successful. But, so that's why I can't say you can't move off the ball. Yeah. You can't do it. You just gotta match it up. You gotta match it up. Right, okay. So, I'm, here I am. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm a little bit of a spitter. Okay, like, so in the backswing. I'll hang left. I like that, yeah. okay. I don't yeah. mind it because Legit. You like the space. I don't mind. No, so like I said, there's a matchup. So if mm -hmm. there's a guy over here, he's going to have to come into some some real Wait. late extension here okay. and really dig in the thing. But mo I don't see many people who can do it, okay? But the guys who I do have create some space in both sides, how much more do they have to push? They don't. They can just dig in the ground now. Okay. All right, let's talk that dig. Okay. All right, so talk how I want to I want to grip the ground here. Okay, so go to the top okay. and, and get more into your, your backswing we're talking about there. So you have some late extension yeah. here. Dumbest. So the, the pressure's here. So from the first move down, I like to get this lead side of the pelvis lower and this wouldn't come in yet right there. And you have some right little bend. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to right bend, front bend also. So you're getting into the ground right there. Right. Now, from here, we still have leverage with the ground, meaning we can continue to use the ground to turn. Mm -hmm. So when I get a player to push immediately, there's no lever, there's nothing left to the ground, mm -hmm. so I can't turn. You know, I think like what I love about this is I think the golf swing forever was taught lateral, yeah. then rotary. Yeah, right? that's what I was taught. Right. So now it's it's you can you can rotate as you're going lateral. Yes. Like it, as you're falling left. But the coolest part yeah. about it is that as we do it, as we're over here and we sit and turn, boom, the yeah. shaft goes right here. Mm -hmm. If we do the same thing when we go here. This shaft never turns unless you manually go into external rotation. Mm -hmm. So my guys don't manually go into externally rotate, they don't externally rotate the shoulder, mm -hmm. okay? And they don't have to rotate the forearms, or they don't have to go into ulnar inflection, or ex I mean into ulnar inflection. Yeah. They don't have to do that. So the thing is, is once they're set up over here, they can sit and turn and the shaft is right where it needs to be, yeah. which is really in a nutshell, all you need to do is get, get the shaft on line and turn. You know, I like it. I, I think, you know, you simplify the downstream for people. You don't, it's not, you don't bump. No stay in a lot of right bend and turn, you know, it's, it's the, the weight's falling and you're starting to grip the ground and, yeah. and, and recruit earlier in the downswing so then you can do something with it 100%. through the impact zone. One more thing, I want you to talk about the club and the hands up here. One of the things I like, and I've, and I've watched some of your videos, is, is kind of turning into the lead arm. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. And because I think that's a really Why don't you good turn sensation. Around and face yeah. into it. Okay, so this, what, because I have, this goes with the lower body wax. So I have a lot of my players say, go to the top. And I set up, and I, I get a lot of my players over here mm -hmm. just for more speed, okay? So I get this forearm parallel spine, this parallel ground, and it's not mandatory by any means, but it's a lot more speed. So when I say start down, start down, see the pressure you put on my hand? Mm -hmm. I don't want any pressure on that, okay? I want pressure here, start down, rotate, boom. Now where's your shaft going? Rot keep rotating? It's laying down. Yeah, it's laying down by itself, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the cool part. That right shoulder will go external. This whole humerus bone will go back internal, mm -hmm. okay? It'll go back this way all by itself. So the turning of the body and leaving the arms up are what is, what's actually doing this. So if we threw a ball right now, we would never go like this and this. I would actually spin my chest and that thing would go external by itself if you ever throw in a ball sidearm. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that we think we have to put it in positions. And I think the biggest problem that I see from players is we see positions in still frames from what, P1 to, uh, down to P7 impact. Yeah. And we're trying to hit these positions when these positions happen. Right. It's good Double stuff. Up. It's really good stuff. Appreciate your time, my man. Thank you for having me. The interviews have been great here on The Stripe Show. We appreciate all of our guests. And you know what? We've got another guest coming up here in a few weeks, an NFL player. That's right, the NFL season is near, and this NFL player is taking us to his stadium. You're not going to want to miss that episode coming up here in a few weeks. All right, transitioning here. You know The Stripe Show. We're all about education. We're all about entertainment. And you know what? We're all about goofing off. I mean, fun. Check this out. Hey, uh, Travis, it's time to go. We got, well, look at these guys. They're still all, we got three mowers, two blowers, and an airplane. I mean, yeah. it's just unbelievable, the golf course, how loud it is. We can fix it in post, man. <sighs> all right, well, uh, welcome to the Stripe Show with Travis Fulton. Who's your favorite teacher? Um, coach? Yeah. Well, right now it's my own, Justin Raganetti. Oh, okay. This, okay, let's go ahead and end this conversation right now. I thought you were going to say me, Travis Holton. You're not gonna, I'm not your favorite coach? 
well, you know, I'm okay. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> I took a trip last week to Pinehurst Morning, and we played. What's up, Jaron? We played seven of the nine golf courses. Beautiful place. I took some great vids and some great pictures. Dustin, what is he doing? Uh, he, he said he wanted to practice his putting. He just wanted to practice his putting, get going. Just, just run this video here from Pinehurst. So, second shot here, par five. I know you paced it up. What do you got? Uh, I'm thinking it's 185. You're thinking it's 185? Come on, man. You're my caddy. You got to know. What is it? Uh, 185. It's 185. All right, that's more like it. You guys ready? Oh, where do you get these guys, Justin? Face open, weight left, little hinge, turn through. Good shot, good shot. But it's a tough green. So. Check that out. I like that. Did you buy that, Young? Dude, you did block me. I did block you. Yes, I did. The club face starts the ball. We want the club face square to our target. Yes. Yes. Open to our target. Yeah. No. Or closed to our target. Closed. I mean, I'm open to a lot of things. Four, three, two, one. No. Oh! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Ah! <laughs> Welcome back guys, aren't we hilarious? And Travis will be right back, but before he does get back, we're gonna go to the next segment, which is the 18 Birdies app features. And this week, it's tea time. Which, who drinks tea anymore? Hey guys, this is Randy with 18 Birdies, and I wanna show you how to book tea times in the app. To book, you can either go to the Play tab or the Marketplace tab. For this tutorial, I'll go through the Play tab. The experience will be the same through both. From the Play tab, tap on Tea Times. Now you can search for Tea Times based on city or course and for a specific date. On this page, you'll also see that you can use the Quick Book Carousel to pick courses that you've recently played. Or you can tap on Hot Deals Nearby. Now let's search the Oakland area. I'm going to tap the city course field, then type in Oakland. Now I can see available tee times for today and beyond in or around Oakland. If I want to adjust my results, I can tap the refine results button here. Now I can change the filters as necessary to get the best search possible. I've found a course that I want to play at, so I'll tap into that course. From here, I just pick the tee time, select the number of players, and tap book. After this, just follow the prompts to complete the order. Now go ahead and start booking your next round with 18 birdies. How about that? 18 birdies app, it just continues to get bigger, better, more efficient. It is the best in the industry, and now you can book tee times right from the app. That's really exciting news right there. All right, let's move on. Time for another 14 strong. We talked about the driver earlier in the show. Let's go on the other end of the spectrum, the short game. Did you see the Open Championship? Francisco Molinari, you talk about a good short game. Only fitting, this 14 strong is about the wedge. All right, I found my ball here in the deep rough, but look at this, Tom. Something's different here. They, they moved the flag. Justin, I thought you said the flag was in the middle. They changed it. I think they did change it. Look at this. The flag's up front now. Oh, well. Let's talk about the U.S. Open. 14 strong. We're going lob wedge because this will be a popular club at Shinnecock Hills. Guys are going to miss greens just like I did here. Not too bad. Just off the left side, and I'm in the rough. Now, hard to say with the U.S. Open. When I was growing up, it was some heavy rough. As of late, not as long. So we're here at Jacksonville Golf and Country Club. Got a little bit of rough and kind of kind of push it down in there a little bit to try to simulate a little bit of this maybe thickish rough that they're going to have to get out of as they're navigating these short game shots. This is a shot that you have to have, right? You've got to be able to take your highest lofted club. For me, it's a 60 degree wedge 
and hit a shot that kind of pops up in the air a little bit, hits maybe with just a little bit of check, not much, and then it runs out, right? This is kind of that medium type of trajectory shot that you have to have from the rough because it usually would slope down the hill, right? The green sits up and we gotta throw something in the air. It can't come in too flat, right? All right, so we're gonna go 60 degrees and what are we gonna see when these guys hit this shot? Well, the first thing is they are gonna open the club face up a little bit and they are gonna lean the shaft a little forward, right? That's gonna get that leading edge a little bit more exposed and down in there. Now, you can experiment and keep it a little bit more neutral, but I would recommend just a little bit of forward lean. Ball position is probably gonna be somewhere in the middle. Weight on the left foot, and really important now, pay attention to this, my sternum, okay? Watch this. I'm gonna make sure it's a little bit here to the left, okay? My sternum right now is on top of that ball. Don't get in here and get going this way, okay? Don't be hanging off like this. If you're gonna do this, then you're gonna hit behind it. All right, so face open. I'm gonna get in there, sternum a little bit over here to the left, and my weight is on the left side. And you don't have to get crazy with it, right? You don't have to get crazy with the weight in, in the sternum. Just make sure it's right there on top. Now, I'm gonna stay there with the weight, with the sternum, and I'm gonna work my left hand. And your left hand's gonna do two things. Watch this, Tom, come in here. Your left hand's gonna hinge vertically and rotate the face. I can rotate the face within the context of that hinge. Here's what that means. We're gonna to go to target line now. Hinge, club head works up. It works up in line with my lead forearm, and now I'm gonna rotate my face. Look at that, that shaft's still pretty well structured in line with my forearm. I see a lot of this when people rotate the face, that club head doesn't work up enough, right? Kinda of gets in here, gets in behind, and when that happens, then it's gonna bottom out too soon, or it gets in here, and then we gotta recover this way. Let's go back to that face on view, watch this. Gets in here, I gotta recover, I gotta get an angle on it, what do I do? I add left bend. I add left bend and now it gets really sticky again at the bottom. So, we hinge the wrist, we rotate the face, but everything's still pretty well structured here. Practice that. Get that toe working a little bit more up and now from there that club head can fall and I can turn my chest through. And as I turn my chest, I'm gonna fold the left elbow, okay? Hinge, rotate the face, turn the chest, and fold the left elbow. And I think that's gonna pop it up in the air. Here we go. It did, look at that, popped it straight up in the air, rolling down the hill to about six feet, and I'll take that. You can see that ball was sitting down in there. It almost came out a little bit like a bunker shot, and sometimes they do, so you've gotta hit it with some speed. You've gotta make sure that as you're turning, there's some speed in there. You're getting that club head to track through, right? It's not gonna be a perfect impact condition every time with that ball really sitting down in the rough. Even though I didn't hit that perfect, I hit it pretty darn good, I had enough speed coming through and it got the ball onto the green about five, six feet. I like this shot. This is a shot that you're gonna see at the US Open, and this is a shot that you need at your, at your golf course to get your short game to be where it needs to be. So I hope you enjoyed that. I like that 14 strong there because we're talking about the wedge just off the green and in the rough. You gotta have that shot. Got my Callaway Mac Daddy wedge. You gotta develop the short game to go with the full swing. And if you can do that, well, then you can score and you can save par just like Francisco Molinari did time and time again at the Open Championship. Congratulations to him. Thank you for watching that 14 strong. I wanna get back to show us your swing. And these two, well, check this out. Hey, Jacob, Travis here. Thanks so much for the video. Lots of good things uh, in your swing here. Love this first move. Club shaft, club face, nice spot. Really good at the top. Lots of good things. Do a nice job rotating through. The biggest thing that jumps out is you can see your head wants to kind of go down in the backswing, and then you have to make room and kind of jump up through impact. All right, Jacob, good stuff appreciate you sending in your swing. Lots of good stuff there. I want to show you something here with your body movement. And as I was talking about on the video, let's go to the target line here. 
when you take it back, you can see your spine kind of dropping, your head dropping, and then when you come down, you have to kind of recruit and get out of the way, right, or recover and make room to hit it. So what I want you to do, when you set up there, instead of hanging out down here like this, I want you to stand up a little bit more, maybe scoot in a little bit, get the spine a little bit straighter, and then feel like your weight's a little more back towards your heels, all right? Now, from there, instead of going this way, I want you to try to stay taller this way. Let the right leg straighten up a little bit and feel like your spine, from face on here, feel like your spine works a little more back rather than down, okay? So watch this. I'm gonna turn and I feel my spine working back. That keeps me taller rather than my spine working down. Okay, that's really important. We call this a little extension in the spine, and you need some of that when you turn to the top. It's gonna feel like you're getting taller, right? From target line here, it's gonna feel like you're standing up a little bit, but you need to sense that because you're going down. Now, as you do that, then from there, you can really stay level through impact. So here we go, get in there, a little closer, taller, weights back on the heels a bit, little right leg, little extension in the spine. I'm actually lifting a little bit right now just so you can sense that. Do that and then let it go. And you'll feel like you've just got a lot more room through here to get that club face to sizzle through. You got a lot of good things and I think that's going to really help you. All right. Okay, Mrs. Finch, here we go. Doing very good here. I know you're working on the club face and trying to keep it more closed going back. You're doing that nicely. That club face is definitely more closed, but let's keep the club head a little bit more out in front of you and not so far to the inside, okay? All right, Mrs. Finch, I got a couple things for you that I think is gonna help you hit your driver. Now, you alluded to the club face in your note, keeping it more closed going back. And I can see the face is definitely pointing down to the ground. You haven't rotated the face open, but you're kind of getting it in here. So my advice to you, keep the club head a little bit more out in front of you with the same club face. Now, from there, I think you're gonna be able to turn and get your hands up a little bit higher and point the club a little bit more off to the left like this. You'll notice because the club had gotten here, your hands were very low and the club was pointing way over there like that. So just keep the club head out here. Your hands will travel up and then watch how I lay this club down a little bit, kind of back on this right wrist or this trigger finger. I can feel that club laying down back there, more horizontal versus that of vertical. So I like that for you there, kind of one, two. All right, now we're gonna go to face on. And from here as we swing through, we're gonna let the hands now travel back up over the left shoulder like this and look at the right foot come up to the toe. I think it's difficult for you because you're in here that when you swing through, it's hard to get enough momentum going to the left and get this swinging over your left shoulder. I think what you'll find is as, as you get your hands up here, you'll have more momentum to swing your hands kind of more up here over your left shoulder like that with your right foot up onto the toe. So just do it in steps. Go one, there's the club head. Two, there's my hands in the club shaft. Three, there's my finish. Right foot up to the toe. And I think that'll help kind of segment it a little bit, piece it together. One, two, three, then you can get some flow. And I promise you, you'll get more distance and more accuracy with that driver. All right. All right, so you know how we end every show on the Stripe Show? We call it 60 second swing fist. We've covered some serious ground from the driver to the putter, but I want to go back to our 4th of July episode where we did bunker play. Watch this again. Time for 60 second swing fix, but before we get to it, like us here at 18 Birdies Facebook and be sure to share the show because you know the deal. If you share, you get a free mulligan courtesy of Travis Fulton. You can tell your playing partners that I said that. All right, give me 60 seconds, Justin. 60 we're in the greenside bunker. It's 180 degrees here in Florida, but I'm here to help you. What I want you to do, greenside bunker, just like that lob shot, right, in the Q&A. I'm gonna open the face. We're gonna lower the handle down, right? Here we go, check it out from target line. I'm gonna lower the handle down. Get a little cup in that left wrist. I'm gonna get a little more side bend to the left. Check this out from face on. Don't get hanging out this way. Get over here 
weights left. Gonna get some arm swing going with the wrist hinge. Now, from here, watch my chest. I'm gonna turn it through. See how I did that? It's like striking a mat. Right? A lot of speed. See that? Splash of the sand out. Pick up the speed with the torso. Handle down. Little side bend left. Wrist hinge. Rotate the torso through. Tom, you get that? That's four feet. That might be the best bunker shot that I've hit all year. I love that. Strike the match. I think that's going to help your greenside bunker play. Thank you so much for watching the Stripe Show episode 20 happy hour. We've taken a look back at what has been with the Stripe Show. So many good moments and segments. Thank you for coming along with us. And remember, if you like us here, go ahead and hit that little like button on the 18 Birdies Facebook. And if you really enjoy it, share it with your friends. Because you know the deal. I give you a mulligan every time you share it with your friends. We've got some great stuff coming up on the Stripe Show. We're going on the road to Indiana to my tournament. And that NFL player I was telling you about, that's right. We're going live to an NFL stadium. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye.